this video, I'm going to show you how to build a report from scratch that leverages the Barcode Generator Power Tool from InsightWorks. The Barcode Generator Power Tool enables users to add 1D and 2D barcodes to Dynamics 365 Business Central reports. In order to use this app, you'll need to have some technical experience. Let's get started. So after installing Barcode Generator to your environment, run the wizard. As you see here, we'll agree to the terms. We're going to also accept the Warehouse Insight prefixes. If you decide not to have it, which means you're not using Warehouse Insight, you can take a look here to set in your prefixes and suffixes if you want to continue using some of the barcode prefix and suffix automations. You could put in something like %ws% for example for warehouse shipment. But this isn't necessary and we're not going to cover that too much on this video. We will continue using the warehouse insight prefixes. Complete that. Now I'm going to go over to a blank canvas here. We're going to build a report from scratch. So as you can see, there's nothing here other than a launch JSON. I'm just going to open this in code. And you can see here, it's just pointing to my environment. I also will show you here the extensions I'm using. As you can see, we have the AL language, which is required as well as I have a few auto completions like the Waldo CRS AL language extension. So first off, let's create our app.json. This is the one that defines our new extension that we're going to be building. We'll get a version number of one. We'll leave the name and publisher as just generics for now because they're not really relevant for this video. And we're going to create our dependency here for the barcode generator. Now the app ID, we can bring in the environment again into the extension management page. Search up the business, uh, the barcode generator. We'll see the version number here is 1.4, but we'll We'll pull up this page here and grab that app ID. And also, just as we see in that barcode generator details page, we will put in the name and publisher verbatim what we see there. Now for the version number, I'm just going to leave this as 1.0. You could put exactly the version you have here, which is 1.4.8382.1. But to be honest, you don't really need that. So as long as it's not higher than the version you have, this will work. So we'll just hit download symbols. And now we have an AL package folder with all the dependencies we need, which is the base applications, as well as our barcode generator, which is defined here as a dependency. Now we're gonna create a report from scratch. So we will just create a new file. And for demo purposes, I'm just going to paste in a little bit of simple code here. This is just port using a base data item of a sales line with a sales line item number. So this will loop for each sales line we have on any filter that we apply to it. Now, to add a barcode to this, we're going to first create a global variable. We're going to call it barcode, and this will use our IWX barcode record. And we'll set that as a temporary. And what this will do is give us a place to insert the image that we will display on the report. So we will create a column here. Call it sales item barcode and use that barcode dot image. And 
and then we will create a trigger after each record is re received. Hold on after get record. We'll create two local variables here as well. The barcode generator code unit. As well as a barcode dot size. Now this is because we're going to be using the QR barcode, which it needs this here for determining how large you want your barcode. If you're using data matrix, that would be the multiplier. And if you're using linear codes, it would be your height and width. For now, we're just going to use the QR barcode. And we're going to go with a dot size of four. Two is the default size. Four gives us twice that, which is, in my opinion, a nice healthy barcode size. We're going to now run that code unit barcode generator. We will run generate QR barcode. Now we can take a look here at the parameters. We can either send it a temp blob, and that's a code unit, or we can send it this record I've created here as a global, the IWX barcode. And that's where the image will be populated into. Now we'll provide the content, which will be the sales line item number. And then we will also enter in the barcode dot size. And there you have it. That's all you need for the AL code. Now we're going to package this so we can build ourselves a layout. So we'll click that layout. We'll open that up externally into our Microsoft Report Builder. Now you'll see in our data set, we have our sales item number and our sales item barcode. And we want to display these as a list. So we're going to create a list here. And we're going to set the data set to the data set result that we see here. We'll hit OK on that. We'll put that right up at the top left, make it a little bigger. And now we'll add a few items in here. Versus our sales item number as text. And then we'll add an image for our barcode. Now we're going to choose database so that we can use our data set result. We're going to set it to that sales item barcode. And for the MIME type, we're going to choose the BMP bitmap. We're going to put that right there. Make it a little bigger. Now the size is something that is fairly important. If we go back to image properties, we go to size. You see you have four options. Original size will respect the dimensions that were provided back by the barcode generator. If you use fit to size, it will stretch or shrink. Fit proportional will stre stretch or shrink, but it will also keep the proportions, which is quite important for barcodes, or you can clip. Now, clip and fit to size are never good options for barcodes. You'll either want to do fit proportional or original size. In my opinion, I like to pick original size of the two. It gives you a nice, clean, crisp image as intended by the barcode generator. One thing to keep in mind then, it will expand if you choose a larger barcode size. It might go past the borders that we have created. If that is the case and you find yourself not trusting it, you can always switch back to fit proportional and then it will keep it in the respective sizes that you need. When it does expand, it will only go right or down. It will not go left or up. So we'll give it a little bit of space here as well so that we don't put our barcodes too close together. And there you have it. Let's give this report a try in Business Central. We'll save this report. We'll close it. And now we'll publish this to the Business Central environment.
now that we've published this into Business Central. Before we run the report, let's just take a look at a few sales orders to see what would work well. We're going to open up here 1005. And we see we have two items in this sales order. So I'm going to search in the magnifying glass with Business Central. Barcode demo, I believe, is what we called that report. Demo barcode, there it is. Obviously, this isn't the most ideal way, but for demo purposes, this will be fine. So we'll just search document number. We'll punch in 1005. And we'll run that report. And there you have it. We got the item numbers along with their respective barcodes. That's how you get started with Barcode Generate Power Tool from InsightWorks. For additional help, please visit the InsightWorks Knowledge Base and online forum. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content.